Good morning guys, and a warm welcome to Alan's Allotment. It's Saturday the 24th of April, 2021. Hope everybody's staying safe, being practical, and keeping themselves out of harm's way as usual. Thanks for popping along again. Um, the subscriptions are going up really, really nicely now. Uh, and I want to start today's video by saying a massive, massive thank you to Terry King's Allotment, Gardening on a Budget. Uh, Terry's given me some great ideas uh, by watching his channel. Uh, he's a very, very knowledgeable gardener. And he also gave me a shout out on one of his last videos because I'd made a comment on his channel suggesting to use sliding windows on his polytunnel project that he was doing uh, as opposed to opening it out, in and out, in or out. Uh, he uses less space up and I thought, would it not be better if you can use the sliding windows? And he adapted that. And he made an absolute cracking job of it. Uh, and as a result of that, he gave me a shout out to Alan's allotment. Uh, and because of that, I have picked up a few new subscribers. So to those new subscribers, welcome aboard. Um, hope you enjoy what little bit of content we uh, provide you with. I'm nowhere near as knowledgeable as Terry. Um, but we, it is a bit of a mixed channel, this, and we uh, we do the garden projects, the polytunnel no dig. Uh, we do some DIY projects like solar panel installations and things like that. Uh, I automated the chicken nest boxes uh, in Video 4 or something crazy like that way back in the day. Um, and in the near future, what I'm, I'm going to do is I've actually got, because the early videos have had very, very few views, I'm going to take some snippets out of the earlier ones and I'm going to make it into a video bringing right from the start of what it was like when we uh, first started the allotment to how it is today. I want to get it in a bit more ship shape fashion before we do that so in the next couple of videos we will do that. We'll make a video of start to finish sort of thing. Now given this has taken me, this will be the second year um, a year and a bit so far. Um, but as a lot of people will know who's already subscribed to the channel, I do have ill health and I can only do little bits at a time, but I do still enjoy doing it. And I like to keep myself moving, um, otherwise you just go stale, guys. So I have to keep on moving and keep try and keep myself as fit as I can. So I uh, just want to say a massive, massive thank you again to Terry King's allotment, uh, Gardening on a Budget. I've had some cracking ideas out of uh, Terry, as I say, in the past. And you will see in one or two of the other ver uh, videos, I have actually given Terry a shout out in the past for his ideas, where we used the toilet brush inside a drill for cleaning the nest pans. So really much appreciated, Terry. Thanks for that, Paul. It really is appreciated. And happy gardening to you. Right, guys, I'm saying morning. It's actually 10 to 12 in the afternoon on Saturday. Have a quite a hectic morning. Uh, this morning we ended up coming up to the allotment to start with. I done all the birds and everything early early on. I came up to the allotment. We got all the birds fed and watered and everything. Checked the chickens, uh, the young chickens, and all the rest of it, and everything's fine. Tickety boo. Weaned off the last two youngsters in this stock loft next to me. Uh, that was the uh, ice little ice bar and the barless carrying ice. We weaned those two off this morning. That's the last of the youngsters out of that nest now. Um, I brought up um, 20 bags of bark chips ready for this area that I'm trying to finish off uh, because they were on offer at 3.49 in B&M. Couldn't find them at that price anywhere else in, uh, in Whitehaven. So um, I went back down and I got another 20 bags. <laughs> so that's where my morning went this morning, guys. Um, been really really busy and I'm pleased I've got those now so today what I'm having to do is have this cup of coffee go and get the back of that shed plastic coated and get the guttering up because I think we're due a little bit of rain on uh, Monday and maybe try and get some rain barrels set up over there I'm not sure what I'll get done today or how much I'll get done today um, the heat's wiping me out as well but we'll see what I can do and I'll bring you along anyways guys for now I'll see you later Right guys, so just before we go and make a start, I've just finished my coffee now. We'll give you a quick look in the polytunnel. Um, again, thanks to Terry King. Uh, he suggested that this this uh, lettuce wasn't a lettuce. 
I didn't think that it was, uh, and that's the reason why I asked for some advice. Uh, so we've pulled that rogue one out there now with plenty of lettuces, and as you can see, these are coming along. They're almost ready for the first picking, these guys. They're doing really, really well, as you can see. Up the end there, you can see the carrots are coming on really well in the bucket as well. There's still no sign of our tomatoes or cucumbers. I got myself some more lettuces just because I could. Uh, these are picking come again as well, these lettuces. And you get all them for two quid. And because I, I didn't get any leaks started, I got myself a few leaks as well, guys. Since I stopped watering these onions and let them dry back a bit, they have picked up a bit and they've perked up, so that's what the problem was there. I'd been over watering. We did give all these a water early this morning and as you can see they're already starting to dry back but it's moist down below guys. This is the other bucket of carrots that were planted at the same time as them ones but they weren't put transplanted out of the pot uh, little tray into here for a, uh, about a week later. Our spring onions that we put in are all coming along really really well and as you can see they're doing fantastic. We did have a bunch of uh, beetroot down here that's been chopped right off, munched away by something. Um, and these ones here are fading slightly better, but as you can see, they're being eaten alive as well. Not sure what's causing that, and I don't really like using insecticides, guys, but if I have to, I will. Um, the onions are doing absolutely fantastic in here. Now, on the last video, I said they were planted in September. They weren't. They were actually planted in November because I planted them on my wife's birthday, which was the 22nd of November. That's when these were planted. These were all put in as um, little sets. Now, Terry also pointed out, and he's the only one that made a comment about this, that the yellowing on the garlic is most likely to be because of the cold snaps then really hot periods then they freeze snaps again and that's the reason why we've got a bit of yellowing on here however since last week you can see that they started to go green again and there's only little bits of yellow on there now so i'm really happy with that thanks for that terry uh, in here you'll see we've still got these onions to be transplanted on there's still no sign of our peas yet that we planted but they're nice and moist uh, there's no sign of the f dwarf French beans in here that we planted. I lost me uh, beetroots again. I'm just going to give these up as a bad job, guys. I just can't. The, the, sm the cells are way too small. I won't do that again. Um, and I just can't keep them watered. If, if I miss a, a, an evening coming up here uh, because of work or whatever, then I just can't get to them and they're just losing them. In the bigger pots, they fare better. As you can see, we bottom watered these again this morning we put everything in there give them a good soaking because they were bone dry so we've still got our four courgettes uh, sorry our four oh, aubergines so we've got four out of our six which is not bad and they're coming along but these are the onions we did get transplanted on and they're doing okay and these are the three surviving tomatoes the alicante um, and that's all we have at the moment still waiting for the melons to appear Still waiting for the uh, cucumbers and the F1 Crimson Crush to appear as well, guys. So, everything's looking tickety-boo tickety over here, and I'm happy with how things are progressing so far. So we're going to get over in the garden, and I'm going to better go and get some work done, as it's now 12.15pm. For the benefit of our new subscribers, um... Over in that section there is where we keep the, uh, the coloured pigeons and uh, rare coloured pigeons and uh, fancy breeds. And we'll have my coffee over there in the tin shed. In this section here is all for the chickens. As you can see from last week, guys, they've spread all of this grass out that I dropped uh, last week and they made a really cracking job of that. That'll fertilise that up again. So I'm now into a piece of reclaimed chicken pen where I've just recently started in the last two or three weeks on this. Yes, I've got plastic down at the moment, but it won't be staying down as plastic. This section down here will, 
just because of the severe weed that was, was in this area. So the plastic will be staying down, but you can see we've got cardboard under as well. But we put the plastic down purely and simply because this area was particularly bad. Um, and it's keeping it a bit, and then what we're going to do is cover it with chippings and bark chippings. Or we might even put a row of flags down here, just a single row, and then put bark chippings here at the side of them. We haven't made our mind up about that yet. In here, there's a couple of raised beds that we made up with pallet collars. Look back on the last couple of videos and you'll see that. We've still got some compost spare there. Won't go to waste, we will use it for potting up or anything at all. We planted these turnips. Now, I just want to make a note at this, uh, uh, make a point at this time. Something being digging in the middle of the bed there. I don't know what, probably a bird or something picking about. These turnips were planted uh, two in a pot and they all germinated, all 24 of them. In fact, it was 25 came up. And we've just planted them in like square foot gardening. And they've had no fleece on. They've been in here two or three weeks now they're growing slowly but they are still growing and still very much alive and still thriving just being given them a drop of water from time to time but importantly they've had no fleece on them or anything and we've had severe frost so it's a bit of an experiment to see what we can actually get away with up here in the north now i don't want to tempt fate and i could still get caught out yet because we can get frost right up until late may but, as this is an experiment, we'll see how it goes, and so far so good with the turnips. We've still got these to plant out with whatever we decide we're going to plant out. I haven't made mine up yet. Here's the 20 uh, bags of bark chips that I unloaded this morning, early doors, when I came up to feed all the birds. <coughs> Excuse me. And I still have another 20 in the car to unload in a minute. And we still have a few more bags of compost from there, from our early... Uh, earlier in the year. This is a little makeshift greenhouse that I built for the citrus trees. Um, a few videos back you can see how that was done on the videos. And in here, this is actually going to be turned into a bit of a shed now for storage. Once we get these out of here, you can see in here we've got the nectarines and the peaches. The grapevine is now coming along absolutely brilliant. There was no sign of life on that. I thought it was dead and never going to come back, but it has now started growing. And then in here we have orange and lemon trees, which can produce full-size fruits. They're on dwarf stock. And then these are uh, an orange, lemon and lime, which are purchased in little nine, nine centimetre pots and potted them on. And as you can see, this is the first year and they're doing really well, guys. All the blooms starting to go back on the nectarines now. I hand pollinated all of these. So I'm hoping that we do get some peaches and nectarines follow on behind. Ultimately, these are all going to live in the new um, polytunnel that I built. Polytunnel, greenhouse, treehouse, whatever you want to call it. So we'll move on to that in a moment. So this here was just a mess of nettles and weeds, brambles, everything. When I knock up the video from start to finish, you'll see what this was like and the uh, challenges I had trying to get this to the state that it's in now, guys. Yes, we've got wood laying all over the place and everything, but they're in tidy, tidy piles, as I call them. Um, all the potatoes are all planted in here now. The ground's really, really dry. We need to try and get some water on those. These are the other lettuces that we put in. Again, they've been in here, but it doesn't really offer any protection from frost or anything. I've got spring onions in there, and I've got lettuces in there. And as you can see, everything is doing really fine. There is, I think there's two lettuces, three lettuces. So there's one here suffered, there's one there suffered, another one here, and one there. All the rest have taken and survived all the frosts and everything, guys, and they're doing really well. We planted, uh, we built this little strawberry bed a few videos a bit ago, and we planted all our strawberries. Last year, these were in pots only, and we've got a great harvest off these. These are our F1 breed. They're Roman and Frisian. You can see our little, uh, this is a, a little pear dwarf pear tree that I bought last year for £15. And as you can see, we've got loads and loads and loads of blossom on this. Beautiful, absolutely beautiful. 
the cherry tree, likewise, is starting to get the blossom on now. It's starting to get blossom on the little cherry tree as well now. And for the first time in five years, we planted this as a twig about five years ago and it developed into a monster. You'll see in the, uh, when I come over to start this again, I ended up having to uh, saw this down with a chainsaw. chainsaw. But you'll see we've got a little bit of blossom on here. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's right down there. But there is little bits up here as well. So I'm hoping we're going to get five or six plums on this this year. We cut this right back and this is last year's growth. So on the second year's growth, which is this year, we should get some plums. This pear tree was also stocking topped and cut right back. Um, I've got two bags of manure here I need to spread around the bottoms of here when I get time. The rhubarb's starting to come up here now. Um, but interestingly, um, I used to have another one of these um, plum trees planted there where the rhubarb is. And that was just a waterlogged guagmire every single year. And the tree was suffering really bad, so I dug it out. And we planted it right smack bang in the middle of that, uh, or more or less, no, sorry, it was just in front of this polytony. It had to come out in order to get the pallet wall down. So it then got a second move, and we moved it up to this top half here. And since moving it till here, you can see he positively enjoyed it. What's more, it's full of bloom, full of blossom. Absolutely loads of blossom. And I've seen the bees on here and the wasps and all the rest of it. So they're all doing the job of pulling it. So hopefully we'll get a handful of plums off this one this year as well. And likewise, this one is the same age as the other one. It's about four years. You can see the trunk on it. Again, we planted these as sticks. And we had to take the chainsaw to this to level it out as well. But I'm going to bush it out now if I can, guys, and keep it dwarfed. And it was planted down there. So as you can see, we're still in a bit of a mess. And it's still a work in progress. We've got all these pallets for projects. We've started taking this fence down here, as you can see. And we've started utilising it on the new shed that came a couple of weeks ago. And again, you'll see all that on the videos. Little pallet steps that I made. And I'm in the process of still taking the rest of this fence down. Then this fence here will be taken down to that height. Because we've got more garlic in here that we've planted out. This half a bed will probably take those few leaks that I bought. And we're going to take all this wire netting down to the other side. Then at this point what we're going to do is we're going to take that entire fence out. So we can just walk straight through there guys. This is the uh, polytunnel store greenhouse that I built over the last couple of episodes as you'll see if you look back on the uh, videos. And in here, it's like we're, we're triffids growing now, guys, because of how protected they are and how hot it is and warm in here. I did make a start on digging some of that out to move it up there for to put the slabs down for the rain battles a couple of videos ago, and you can look back and see that as well, guys. So, yeah, I still need to get some soil out of here and get this level out a little bit more before we start to cover it and then put our paths in and raise beds, etc., to get the trees in. So I've got still got a lot of work ahead of me. And I can only do a little bit at a time. But the ventilation system in this is working absolutely amazing. Still got to get the wire netting on there and put the finishing touches to this greenhouse. I keep jumping from one project to another. Uh, it's not the way to do things, guys. But we're getting there slowly but surely. I do things as and when I can. When um, we can afford it. And more importantly, when stuff's available. So, that's enough of my babbling. Just for the new viewers, I'm just going to crack on and see what I can get done today, guys. I'll see you later. Right, guys, sorry if this is a bit of a lengthy video for you today. It's, to, it's, it's aimed predominantly at the uh, new subscribers to give them a bit of a catch-up about what I do and what I don't. Uh, I'm in the shed. I've just had the fan on because I'm absolutely melting. Um, been a bit of a chore. I'm having a cup of coffee to keep myself hydrated. But what I have managed to do is I've managed to get those sort of 20 bags of um, wood chips out of the car and unloaded. Um, I've also pulled up the plastic off the ground round the back side of the shed and because I haven't got the energy today to go in and dig any more of that soil out out of the polytunnel and it's way too, way, way, way too hot, 
I thought, what can I do to sort, sort of try and level this ground a bit? I don't need it to be perfect level. I just want it to be sort of level so I can stand the, the water bottles on there. So what I've done was I actually stapled up the polythene off the ground onto the back of the shed. Just put a few tacks in to hold it out of my way. And I took three bags of those wood chips. And what I've done was I threw them down underneath the polythene. And we got where, where, where the ground was like that. We've sort of levelled it off now and stamped it right in and it's relatively firm it's, it's fairly good it should do the job guys i just haven't got the energy to dig the soil out and, and and do it properly so um i've done that then we laid the polythene back down just pulled it back off the back of the shed and laid it down walked up and down it and it does seem to be really really firm and the fact that the plastic will keep the rain off the wood chips as well um, it should last a few years before maybe one day i'll have the energy to do it properly but it'll just get me started. That at least then, because that job had to be done first, basically. So we've done that, and then I've now got the plastic on the whole of the back of the shed. Still got the lats to put on, uh, and the gutter in. Right guys, so around here I have a couple of rain bottles that were mostly full. And what I've got in here is a submersible pump, 12 volt. And as you can see, the thickness of this pipe I managed to, it has a little on off switch down here as well, look. We can turn it off, turn it on. And it's just running off a little 12 volt battery there, which we charged up on the solar panel over a couple of days. And you can see the water flowing through here. And I somehow managed to get a standard connector on the end of there. It was a bit difficult, but I managed to reduce it down to a standard connector. And what that's enabled me to do is to get all these plants a severe water and as you can see they were crying for water guys these beds are all cracking as you can see the ground was starting to crack we haven't had any rain for weeks and weeks and weeks now I have been watering this by hand with watering can but it's been really hard work so I've rigged up the pump now I've got it all sorted out and I've now got a length that works and the pump's doing a cracking job I don't need to sit and monitor it uh, we've watered all the strawberries we've watered all the trees give all these a good soak in done the garlic we've watered these little trees here that are just starting to leaf up now and give all these lettuces and onions a good drink and what we're doing now is we're transfer I want these rain bottles taken down because I'm going to redo this and I'm going to take the water off this roof of the greenhouse and we're going to put the rain bottles down here and potentially up the side of here but they're up on a height there and I'm going to reclaim those sleepers that's in there uh, I've done that because I had them falling down down and down but Teddy King showed me again Teddy King showed me a way that if you get them level or near as damn it level how you can make them all fill simultaneously so I'm emptying these now that one's now empty so we can get that start setting this up around the back um, of that other shed where it'll catch more water because I only have a little strip I'm going to, I don't want to blind you but I only have a little length of gutter in there now that's catching water there and this pipe is now long enough to come all the way up round to this barrel that I've actually just done now and I cut the top off this and I'm just in the process of putting some water in here to give it some weight so it doesn't blow about if we get any winds anything the forecast a bit of rain on Monday, but I don't want any gills to get up and blow this out the situ once I have the downspouts uh, sorted out. So as you can see now, I've got all the lats on the back, got the plastic coated, fixed to the back. We've got the gutter up, got the downspout, and we've got the makeshift pipe that will go in there. I've literally just jammed that in there while I have the horse pipe running in there. And you can hear that water pouring into this barrel now from down the back side of that other little greenhouse. If I get it about half full, that'll do me. Um, I just want to get some weight in there to stop this one moving. I've raised it slightly at this end because the ground was still falling away. But I've got it relatively level around here now, guys. Um, still a little high on this spot here, but I, I'm just going to make it work, guys. Whatever. I've got to put some little blocks of uh, posting like I have done with that one. And if I've got to try and level them up a little bit with slithers of wood or whatever, that's what I'm going to do. But basically, it's too much work for me to put the soil in there and get it perfectly level. But as long as we get it somewhere near, you guys will do me. 
this barrel will be disposed of. We've still got this one here. I want to get at least one more empty barrel and the lid cut off so I can get it under this pipe. So if we do get any rain on Monday, we can catch it off the full length of this chicken shed as well, guys. And then we can start linking those ones up. Now I have more rain barrels, but they're all full of water as well, but they haven't been washed out yet. So I don't want to use those ones just yet. So what I'm doing is basically I'm moving the water from round the back of there up here and then we could easily move it on again with the pump if we need to because these barrels have been washed out so uh, that's what I'm in the middle of doing now guys sorry if this is turned into a lengthy video but we're getting there a little bit more work done guys see you later Right guys, this is another idea we pinched off Terry King. So we've got the water coming up into this barrel. We've emptied another barrel now. We've got another one cut. And then what we've done is we've used a length of horse pipe to go down the side to the bottom of this barrel and set, set it siphoning into this one. And as you can see, as this one's filling up, so is this one. So absolutely cracking idea. I think Terry got it off someone else um, and then I of course pinched it off Terry himself. That's where I've seen it anyways. So it, the system really does work and it works well guys. So basically what happens is, is you fill one rain barrel, you fill them all simultaneously. And this is what we're in the process of doing now guys. Simply with a length of horse pipe hooked over and into the next barrel. Right, I've just about had enough now guys to be honest with you. I'm happy with what we've got done so far. I'm just waiting for this other battle to empty now. And then I'm going to give you a final roundup and that will be it for today. Right guys, been a bit of a long one today. Uh, without uh, showing you a great deal to be honest with you. <coughs> Excuse me. 5.30pm now. I'm absolutely burned out. But most of that was because I hung 40 bags of uh, bark chips this morning. And it was late when we got started. So yeah. Got all of the back of the... Uh, shed plastic coated and lathed down now two barrels set up and the siphoning system set up and it's working i had to modify it slightly but it's working okay uh, so that's two barrels done i've got another one emptied which i can get cut get the top cut off tomorrow and get that one set up around the back as well um, i'm not sure what, exactly what i'm going to do tomorrow depending on how i feel um, i may or may not do anything at all right um if you haven't already, pop over and see uh, Teddy King, uh, allotment gardening on a budget. Tell him Alan said hello, and tell him he said, he said, I said thanks as well for all his help and giving me a shout out. I'm just going to have this cup of coffee, and then I'm going home. For now guys, whatever you are in the world, please stay safe, and be practical, keep yourselves out of harm's way, and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching guys.